Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Royal Rumble campaign with a little bit of a different start than I would have expected. This is the same campaign um, as always. Double enemy squad side, yellow alert, 100 mods, you know it by now. But I was actually wanting to do a supply raid and whenever I prepare an episode I typically uh, outfit the squad in all, uh, all of its glory. Then um, start the stream and I I simply uh, went back to uh, double check on uh, on Bradford and co and the moment that I left the outfitting screen what happened is the uh, mission uh, the covert ops mission popped up and as you can imagine there's of course an ambush because we wanted to find the Raiders HQ so now we're in facing the raiders and very likely a lot of the skirmishers um, plus it seems that the raiders are actually maybe also accompanied by the dark elders i'm not 100 percent sure about that so whether that is the same faction or two different we're going to find out be it as it may the supply rate is still happening but we will need to do them on par with that mission and those extra missions from the uh, new factions really add to the difficulty because people are tired uh, i just had a mission uh, to to raid one of uh, the factories now we need to do this mission and then afterwards we need to do the supply raid so no rest it, it really starts feeling more like a long war with multiple squads anyways we will take the c team onto this because I think it's a nice training opportunity. We got Jarangs, Aviator, we got Golden Boy, Haxer, uh, just finished his training. Welcome to the squad, uh, buddy. We got Shinrod and Hayward. Got a couple of fun items in here. I'm testing that Frost uh, armor for the first time. I also got a Battle Scanner, just to see that we can use uh, that as well. And originally I wanted to use uh, this here against the Codex. Not really sure if we need that anymore uh, because there might be no Codex here. Comes at no surprise that this is the exact same group that we would have used. You know what? Who knows? Maybe there is a Codex. Might as well. Good. Without further ado, Let's uh, run into uh, the actual mission. Okay, and we landed and started the mission. Well, that's pretty much a clusterfuck. One criticism that I would have towards these new factions is I like the idea that you need to infiltrate them, but that's really kind of a poor man's uh, implementation of it. They want you to have <coughs> an a group of 10 operatives to take on the challenge. I don't think that that's really a good way of balancing. I was never a big fan. That's one of the things that I actually do not like at all about uh, Long War. Just the massive squad size increases. It gets messy, takes longer, has not as much to do with uh, player skill because uh, losses are less meaningful. I need to not balance your your action economy as much it's my personal opinion on uh, on that i know others have uh, potentially strong feelings in the other way around but boy it is always a very untempting uh, experience to go through 10 soldiers at the same time 11 because we also got an elite gunslinger Anyways, it is what it is. I'm not trying to be too negative here. Coming across as a negative Nancy right at the beginning of this mission, and I didn't even want to. So, let's take the high ground here. Um, we got Shinrod and we have Jarangs. Tell you what, <clears throat> both of them might uh, go further down. Protect the data tab until completion and eliminate everybody. Well, okay, cool. Yeah, we can do that. So if we go in that direction. If you say so. Done. Okay, I'll go. 
that's another problem with just too many people on uh, the map. It is not like you're fighting on two different fronts. You're still competing for the same amount of cover. And it makes it massive cluster F. Look at that, we got one, two, three, four, five, six people just in the primary fire line. Okay, four turns until data mining is complete. I have no idea what we're up against, so I'll play this one here a bit careful. Bandits are moving. Well, we're hearing a lot of potential movement, but n we're not seeing any. Wow. Well, that's at least 10 ever vigilance. If we're dealing with uh, so much overwatch, how about me just moving up with someone who does really not care about overwatch at all? All right, sounds like a plan is what Saiken said as he moved uh, directly to the front. We got Untouchable, Implacable and Bladestorm so we can move over there. Getting a bit closer with 20 due. That's a little instant shot, and I think I'll use him for kill zone. In the meantime, Haywire. Kill death from above for a bit further movement in the right direction. I figured out that this here was not the smartest way to play it. Good, we're moving up as far as we can. Elite Gunslinger has all of the nice abilities, including Lightning Hands. Uh, how about we're moving to here <clears throat> and giving Golden Boy the chance to actually get a kill. 50-50. Good job. Massive damage, by the way. I like it. I thought there was still one more enemy, but I might be mistaken. Oh, there we go. I tell you what, we're kill zoning. Inappropriate Murphy, long time no scene. He had been busy making inappropriate jokes. Gunslinger moves over. And Hacksaw. By the way, super lead way of uh, writing your uh, combat tag sign. Shoot. 
Shinrod. Well, moves to the front. Drangs moves to the front. There we go. More bandits are coming. I forgot that that is the faction who got the short end of the stick. The one that really didn't have a lot going for them. But I shouldn't um, ridic ridicule them. As they can still dish out some damage. Alright, here we go. Oh, he jumped down before I could uh, blade storm him. Clever. Lots more bandits. Okay. Twenty Dude definitely is making good use of that kill zone. And now he's out of ammunition. Unfortunately, didn't have that extended magazine. Lots of ever vigilant. And the bandits are coming in. With their usual tactic, power in numbers. Gunslinger moves up. Yep, bring it on, guys. Come closer. There is enough for everyone. Trying to help him. And our gunslinger is now setting up everyone unfortunately his pistol is not strong enough a bit embarrassing and his aim is also not good enough but the rest is actually quite good i appreciate for <coughs> a newly acquired unit he's dealing quite a lot of damage in the meantime when you do, uh, we'll show him how it's done for real. Oh, what? Oh, boy. I was not expecting an elite sniper of Colonel rank to miss any of those shots. But to be fair, we haven't given him a lot of uh, aim increasing gear. Okay, so far so good. And ours definitely has a lot of uh, aim increasing options lightning hands over here all right kills him immediately and we do another face off that's the third one in a row Slowly but surely thinning out the ranks. Alright, cool. 
yeah now finally looks more like a manageable battlefield One boy moves up. Super far away that shot, but still a hit. Golden boy does a golden job. Like it. Like it a lot. Or continuing to move up from full cover to full cover aviator. And the point position here. There's yet another pack back there. Let's try that shot. Nice one, that's a kill. We're using death from above for Haywire to move up. By the way, out of interest, why does Haywire, who doesn't have kill zone, have the gun with, like what? Uh, a super expanded, uh, expanded magazine. And 22 is uh, running around with that excuse of a gun. Yeah, we're going to change after that mission. Hayward and Endors are going to change, and 22 gets Endors gun. Boy, oh boy. We could have had a legendary kill zone. I mean, the one that we had was still very good, don't get me wrong. But ours could have been even better. Gotta be a bit mindful here, like both not moving too far. Instead, ranks is moving up. Bit of Overwatch, inappropriate Murphy. Moves down here. Overwatches and some more Overwatch. It seems like we've killed around 20 enemies. Thanks to these um, face-offs, didn't really feel like that many. Not sure how they run through all of this without even triggering any form of Overwatch. Oh, now Murphy gets the Colonel from a rando... Uh, from a rando uh, skirmisher. I see. Good. Time to get that skirmisher. Done. Reload. He didn't kill him. Unbelievable. Good. Her trick is to always kill one person and then continue to move up. That's not a bad technique. I uh, should have given the kills to the more junior guys. Doesn't matter now, but it would have been the right thing to do level uh, the soldiers with less experience but the cluster continues to move up
and ours continues to move up as well. I think we've cleared most of uh, the area. There's potentially one more pack. But with that map being so gr generous with the high ground here, all of the advantages are really with us. Good. We're moving everybody as far to the front as possible. When you do, uh, needs to get a bit further. One more turn until the next uh, kill zone that he could uh, create. The heavy guys are moving in as well. And so far we're actually doing quite well. I mean, all things considered. Minor wounds at best. Nothing really to write home about. Time also seems to be reasonably generous. But we need to get there ASAP. Still surprised about how they always kind of get to us without uh, triggering Overwatch. But okay, maybe I'm missing something. Endos puts a nice turret down. And Implacable will be the one that is getting the promotion here. In the meantime, our lower ranking soldiers might get some promotions themselves. Yep, there we go. Promotion earned. Ranks moves up, kills this guy. Implacable go, go, go. moves up. Aviator moves up. Exo moves up. We need to get right there. Inappropriate Murphy is going to be the one that is scanning the target. Okay. 
then there is a second target not 100% sure I think that was the first one actually I do have a bit of an idea of how we could get there faster. I need to go still a little bit closer, but can very much use a grenade, explode that, and then remote uh, ranged hack. And ours overwatches that zone with a kill zone. Next turn will be 22. Okay, so far so good. Good. I think there is really just one pack left over. Oh. This you should remove the walls without destroying the cage. Or the cache, rather. There we go. That's how you establish a vision. Guys, just wanted to loot that thing here. It's not it's not really that difficult. Turret begins to shoot. Endos moves a bit closer. Luckily, we do have three snipers. Be crazy. Hey, well, that was your chance uh, to actually get a promotion. Good, charging in. Flakeville does what he's supposed to. Did we just trigger? That's an interesting uh, turn of events. Uh, the entire, the entire time, everything was like calm, collected, no problems whatsoever. And then all of a sudden, these guys show up, right? All right, moves up here. Gunslinger is definitely going to tank for us.
Good, let's hit these guys because they are definitely stronger than the bandits. I completely did not have any of them on the radar. But we're trying to help the ones that are flanked. We're watching a bit to give support. Finally. Golden boy, we're not trying to stack up we need to uh, we need to spread out quite a bit you know what let's just move out of line of sight and let them uh, fight it out Gunslinger takes some return fire, okay. That's fair. Yeah, I was afraid that that would happen. Untouchable baby. This looks a little ugly. Okay, so far so good. Uh, now it's getting a bit uh, more spicy. It went from calm, collected, easy peasy, lemon squeezy to eh, a bit more dangerous. Don't get me wrong, I don't think that we're going to lose and uh, th that we're going to lose the mission. It's more the question of whether or not we're going to lose anyone in particular. Couple of kills here. Turret helps us to clean the battlefield. Just trying to take out the bandits. Could battle scan, we could also just overwatch to be honest. Okay, that Archon, I can definitely kill him. Yeah, so Snap Freeze deals some damage, but also to ourselves. I'm going to be honest with you, that's a bit of a shite ability. sure who designed it but it does not really work well the dark archon 
would be the next target. Well, hello there, Dark Archon. Critical plus shredded. That's what we're talking about. Takes a nice little hit. Good job. We can't kill anyone with 100% chance, which means I'm just going to fanfire. The guy's down to a few hit points. Good. Fantastic. Inappropriate Murphy gives himself a protocol and with that threat assessment breaks this guy's uh, suppression Moving in here, the Dark Elder Scorch is definitely my main target. Double whammy before he can reposition. Why exactly are we missing both? Wow. But continuing to hit the Scorch. Alright, still has Guardian, which is fantastic. Gunslinger moves forward in the hope of being a good target. Golden boy. Don't like it. Do we have another option? I mean, we could shield wall. Full cover for Hexer. He tries to take out the guy upstairs, unfortunately without success. That's just Overwatch. I'm deeply disappointed that Implacable managed to get himself in such a fucked up position. He missed twice on a situation where he should typically be very, uh, very much just killing the enemy. We need to withdraw with uh, Implacable. He just took way too much damage here. Remnant healing to get him almost to full. And then I would say a protocol because he's still the frontliner. Good. Luckily, he's so tanky. Trying to hit the grotesque. Yeah, 
We might want to holo target him, but none of our heavies does have holo target at the moment. Gunslinger goes and really takes uh, the point position here. Want to take the heat. Unfortunately, not successful. The idea was good. The execution, not so much. Golden Boy moves up. He has been hitting a couple of really low hit uh, low chance shots unfortunately not today i'll tell you what we will do we're going to resort back to normal tactics which is grenades Exer moves to the other side. Trying to hit that grotesque. We have an option to quickly kill them. Like easily without expending a lot of valuable... High damage shots. I think inappropriate Murphy is just trying to kill to kill her. That's a good idea. Is it clear? Moving to here. That gives us untouchable, plus we do have Bladestorm. Good, free reload, Overwatch. A protocol over here and then overwatch and finally kill zone so the grotesque is the only thing that is left over of course at one burn uh, one skirmisher Somehow they are not triggering Overwatch. Too bad our gunslinger was killed. Radar material, done. Eliminate all hostiles. Should not be that difficult. I'm still trying to think how we can use that armor. It's the core idea about something that is dealing damage in close range as an action that doesn't end your turn. I like the idea, but it is so niche and it deals damage to yourself and the radius is super close. Not sure if I really like the implementation of it.
Shinrod already got his promotion. So no need to continue killing. Ranks can't get close enough. Well, Haywire could kill and maybe get her promotion. Good. We're just ending the turn. I think we've eliminated all hostiles. Oh no. <laughs> I forgot about that one bandit. All right. All right. More difficult than expected. Like in the middle of it, I thought, ah, the raider, uh, the bandits are just not a really, really good uh, faction to uh, to fight or uh, fight with. I'm not a hundred percent sure why or how the dark elders had also tried to raid them, but the narrative that I would put in would be we were trying to locate the bandit hq and since it's a royal rumble the dark elders were trying to do the exact same so they uh, sent in kind of a scout party almost got the material uh, bandits were distracted we were essentially ambushing uh, ambushing both of them and then started to kill all of them so that's how it played out. That's the official report that Bradford will put to the commander's log. And now we are theoretically ready to uh, ambush the bandits HQ. So they could also be uh, destroyed and killed. We got the bandits left over. We got the skirmisher faction. We got the cult of Jiraiya and we got uh, the dark elders, of course. So quite a few to go. All the targeting here, that is super helpful. And Shinrod threat assessment. Shinrod's already quite far advanced. I mean, look at that captain ring. And uh, he just had a few missions, actually. Good, and out of it, I think we should see a few promotions. Because now the base is done. We got Murphy who finally got his promotion. And can we get something else that's meaningful? I think Avatar progress is really not that important anymore. Locate Raider HQ would be nice. That's another. That's another. Um, that's a cultist base in this case. Problem with those uh, things is there's just too much, uh, too uh, too many ambushes. I tell you what, we can do this, but let's double check the timing. 11 days until a supply drop. Let's just do something which is not going to get, it, uh, get us into trouble. Promotion would be fun. What else do we have? Health plus one is not bad. Dodge plus seven. I mean, this here is okay. I would like to use seven more days. How many days? Eight. Well, I tell you what, uh, we wanted to do after the bond training. So Hogbite is free at the moment anyways. Uh, 
we're taking any engineer available there you go and it requires just a normal soldier but how about we're using a squaddy bastard you are going to go with eric anderson give him the few dodge points that he needs and then afterwards we can raid the hq an appropriate murphy finally got the promotion and we're taking restoration just like uh, the other times because we need a lot of healing so who's left in that major tier from the original b team it's zirkim and ataxia and i mean we could give uh, either of them just a normal promotion mission i suppose or we're just going on to the missions with them we now have the supply rate ahead of us and I would be thinking that uh, these two plus bubble plus a few of the lower levels could work out well soldier bonds to ranks with whom nah well hmm no too high level uh, for him I don't want uh, a colonel together with uh, like a lieutenant at this point better find someone in in the low level group So yeah, we wanted to do, or we must do, the uh, supply rate now anyways. Just double checking, is there anything that we could do which would make sense? All of this costs a lot of valerium cores, which we don't want to give up. And although we have so many... Uh, supplies we do not have the other means but that's what the supply rate is for so hopefully after this mission after the supply rate we should be fine good i prepared uh, for that mission with a lot of uh, a lot of blue screen rounds anyways Brings us to the end of uh, today's uh, mission. If you want to do a supply raid on my channel, click the like button. Uh, I promise you uh, there will be some hilarium behind it. Just click it a few times. And we see each other in two days uh, because that's when the next episode airs. Take care and goodbye.